church on this, the second day, second Sunday of Easter. There's a few announcements this morning. The first one let's take care of that is not related to worship. Many of you who pulled in may have seen the, blue, the new blue box added to the back of our parking lot. So on those rainy days that you have nothing to do, if you'd like to clean your closet, we'll certainly accept anything you'd like to give to us. There is an MSP meeting, which a lot of us don't understand what that is. Basically, I'm not sure I do either, but it's at 3 o'clock on Tuesday afternoon. 6.30 is council. And I'm not sure if any of you are aware of the deaths that have occurred this past week. Uh, we have lost Flip Coonrod, the wife of David Coonrod, Jim Spiak, who was also a member, and Gerald Daniels, who was the brother of Bob Daniels. I think that's it. Is there any other announcements for this morning? Okay. That looks like it's it. Enjoy your worship.
shall be in need. Let us begin our worship, however, with the need to confess our sins and seek God's forgiveness. Please stand to our rule. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you of all of your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also the theater. Our gathering here this morning is number 132 in the Green Book of Luther Book of Worship. Come, you faithful, raise the strength. <laughs>
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. of any professions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as any had need. Here is the reading. The Psalm, the Psalm 120, 133 on page 282, and it will be read responsibly. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fire upon my head that runs down upon my ears. Upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing of life forevermore. <coughs> the second reading is from chapter 1 of 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life is revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, 
We lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Here ends the reading. this coming week 
It will be one way when the weather turns a bit cooler, although it will be actually just slightly above average this <coughs> coming week, instead of about 20 degrees above normal that it has been the past several days. Although I think a lot of us doubt that weather forecasters and their forecasts will always be right anyway. I tend to look back and that was like one of the things that I wanted to do when I grew up. And when I grow up, I'll let you know what I decide. But let's face it, we all have our doubts throughout our lives, not the, just the weather, which we really can't do anything about anyway, except maybe try to prepare for it. But if we want to, uh, if we want the facts to dispel any doubts when it comes to major life events, well, we want to get as many facts as we can. Things like, okay, I've got to make this decision. Whom do I really want to be with? What do I want to do for a career? Even, where should I live? Sure, a friend might give us some advice as to what they think, but when it comes right down to it, it's up to us whether we choose to act on it or even believe a word that they say. Still, there is no doubt that there's some things that are just hard to believe. And in the Revised Common Lectionary, every year on the second Sunday of Easter, we hear about a person who no doubt, apparently, had a hard time believing the incredible. Yes, indeed, having already heard the Gospel, you know I'm talking about Thomas. Poor Tommy. Every year his story comes out and he always seems to be unfairly singled out, but he really wasn't the only one who doubted. When we hear about the resurrection accounts in the various Gospels, we learn how the disciples did not believe Mary Magdalene's account about the encounters with the two heavenly visitors who asked her why she was looking for the living among the dead. Well, of course, and then there's Peter, the yeah, good old Pete, who, not uh, believing this quote-unquote idol talk of hers, goes to Jesus' burial site, and upon seeing it, simply went home. All the enemies. Doubting Mary and Magdalene? Check. Doubting Peter? Check. <clears throat> and that's on Easter Sunday, the day of resurrection. Now, fast forward one week, in the meantime, we are told that the other disciples had eventually seen the risen Lord as they hid in a locked room, but, are we, but we are not told why Tommy was not present. The actual reason why Tom wasn't there, well, really it's not important. <clears throat> but I think for our own sakes, it is critical that he wasn't there because, after all, we weren't there either. Sure, he says he won't believe it until he can probe Jesus' wounds with his own hands, but think about this. If he didn't have faith to start with, why would he even want to be in that place in the first place? I think Tom showed that he already had a pretty good grasp on what true discipleship meant. And this goes back to when Jesus had heard that his friend Lazarus had died. Looking back to uh, in John chapter 11, verse 16, if you want to check it out, You'll recall that the other disciples were trying to talk Jesus out of uh, heading to Bethany, where his friends Mary and Martha lived, because their brother uh, Lazarus had died. Since the other apostles feared of what kind of nastiness might happen to all of them if they went there. But it's Tommy, the lone voice, that says, let us go with him so that we may die with him. There's that doesn't shout a doubt, rather, no doubt, okay? For that really confesses faith, true faith. John notes in his Gospel account that Thomas' name Didymus in both Greek and Hebrew means twin, although, once again, we're never told by the Gospel writers who his twin is. And I'd like to think the reason is because we are all twins of Thomas. Like I said before, all of us have our moments of doubt. Some big, some small, some often, not so often, but we always had them. Because guess what? We're only human. 
For instance, like when, when our prayers aren't answered on our timetable, or when our prayers aren't answered to our satisfaction. Really? You're doubting that? Let me get that straight, okay? Because we, it seems like we've forgotten what God said through the prophet Isaiah in chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways uh, higher than your ways, and my thoughts more than your thoughts. No, no doubt about the point that God was trying to get across in no uncertain terms. For even Christ says, do not doubt, but believe. Granted, sometimes that's easier said than done. And in the past year or so, I think we've all had more doubts and fears and frustrations and uncertainties than we've ever faced, or ever dared face again. This is something we tell our great, great, great grandkids if we live that long. Once in a century type things. <laughs> really, that happened to us. But if you recall, no doubt, we have heard of any number of positive stories in the past year of people reaching out to others like never before, friends and strangers alike, with random acts of kindness in those days of fear and isolation when we couldn't get together the way we would like to. If you think about it, that is kind of like being Christ for one another. After all, remember the apostles were locked up in that room out of fear. And what's the first thing that Jesus says to them when he appears to them? Peace be with you. Let's face it, we all need that kind of peace in our lives, probably more than we care to admit. But lately, and especially in the past year, with all that's happened, that inner peace that we seek, yeah, that's a little hard to come by every once in a while. But we shouldn't doubt for a moment that our lives won't get back to normal, albeit slower than we would like. Dispel any doubt with faith and belief. For believing goes way beyond what we will say in a creed in a few minutes. You see, believing is more like a relationship, a way of life, a way of love. And just like Peter and the other disciples that week after the first Easter, Jesus' words are directed to us as well. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if you think about it, Thomas never actually doubts Jesus either. Rather, he doubts the apostles who said that they saw Jesus. But here's the kicker. Did nothing different except, sh so, uh, except seeking shelter behind black doors at resurrection day. Even after Jesus commanded them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. A week later, they're still sheltering in place behind those locked doors. Perhaps that is why Jesus says, Peace be with you a total of three times as a way to remind them to dispel any doubts, to go forth in faith, to step out in faith about what they need to do, which has nothing to do with hiding in a locked room. So that third time when Jesus says, Peace be with you, it's not only directed at the other ten apostles again, We've already heard him say it twice, but chose to do nothing. This time, it also includes Thomas. But if we are Thomas's twins, it is directed to us as well, to minimize the doubt and to maximize the belief. And note it's only Thomas who says actually anything in response to Jesus, peace be with you. And it is something so personal straight from the heart and soul, a statement of true faith in five words or less. My Lord and my God. 
Note that he doesn't say something like, you are the Lord and the God, but rather, my Lord and my God. I love that one simple confession of faith. My Lord and my God. One on one, Jesus and me. No doubt that is what true peace is like. And no doubt that with a relationship like that, we can do anything. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, it could be really, really sad if we do. The author of John's Gospel sums it up by saying, Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. Well, what about those who haven't read John's Gospel? or heard anything about the good news of everlasting life. Those who find themselves locked inside their own lives, not unlike the apostles who lock themselves inside their room, but that everything changes for them. Once Christ, once Christ enters and commissions them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, Jesus said in today's Gospel reading. Sure, we've got the evidence right there. They hesitated, but they eventually did go. And just check out the Acts of the Apostles in your Bibles or online to see exactly what they did. But we are also called. And we have also hesitated. Yes, let's admit it, we've hesitated at times. And maybe we still can't physically go to a lot of places. But that doesn't mean that we cannot be sent by God. No doubt, though, that we can still continue to do uh, or be part of some of those positive things that we've heard about and saw happening this past year. And in so doing, we can unlock those doors of those who have not heard the good news so that Christ may enter their lives as well. Sure, you believe, you already know about how Jesus took our sins to the cross so that we could have eternal life through his resurrection. But how are others to know if you don't or won't do anything about spreading the word or sharing the good news about a gift of grace and eternal life that they may know nothing about? The thing is, <clears throat> you're not alone in this endeavor. Indeed, no doubt about it, the Apostle Thomas said, right, my Lord and my God, one on one. Jesus and me. Jesus and you. Jesus and your neighbor. Jesus and that person longing for a true resurrection relationship. No doubt if you want to make that happen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed.
name of Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer with steadfast love. I will end each petition with hear us, O God. Please respond with your mercy is great. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. <coughs> Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse air, and provide revitalization and moisture to parched lands. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority, that they may shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority, and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we may provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, afraid, hurting, or suffering, whether in mind, body, or spirit, especially those people listed in our bulletins as well as those in our thoughts at this moment. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community of Gilead Lutheran Church. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together, so that we may live in love for one another, and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We now lift up in silence those other personal hopes and concerns that God can see written upon our hearts at this moment. Hear us, O oh God. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and in remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as the altar is prepared, please remain standing for the altar. Thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks. 
thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, ever-living God. But chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, and who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn in these words. Holy, 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 Lord, God of the power and mind, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna is in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna is in Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For it is through him, with him, in him, unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I ask you to take your little uh, communion kits here, and open up the top, and take out the uh, wafer that's inside. For that is the body of Christ given for you. Turn it over. Pull the tab back carefully on the great truth. For that is the blood of Christ shed for you. And the usher will come up and take your use uh, of things. The usher will be there. And may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Christ.
not just this day, but every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
to serve the Lord by serving one another.